started recording good morning so today's class what in today's class what we try to cover yesterday we had some issues with the image right so we'll try to read retrieve the same thing what we tried yesterday Right. Sorry. Six. So I'll try to put this as a lab setup class. Imagine I have one ES exercise. Okay. And what is the plan? I want to deploy three ES access servers. In previous session, I've shown you how to install configure the ESXA server on a brand new HP server if you want to simulate yourself so that part is done now I need to set up the full-fledged VMware lab just to practice every feature or just to practice all the available features within 6.7 so for that what I need I need three ESXA servers so I have this base ESXi server, ESXi. What is the IP? 192.168.1.151. So let's decide. I have three ESXi servers. What's the IP ranges? 192, 192.168.30.51. 192.168.30.52. 53. These are the three IPs for all the three years access servers and subnet is slash 24. And what's the gateway? 192.168. I don't want to hide that. And the gateway is 192.168.30.1 is the gateway. Okay. Can we go ahead and uh, deploy these three years access servers? So there are two ways. Right. Yesterday, I'm explaining you. One is create VM, install and configure ESXi on VM. This is what we did in the first session. In the second session, what we tried create or use OVA template to deploy. Yeah. So it is it is failed yesterday. So we'll retrieve this. What I did, let me go back. What I did, I've downloaded one more image yesterday and I've tested it. Seems like it's working. So let me try it out. Go to ESX server. Right click, create a VM. Now select deploy virtual machine template or deploy virtual machine from OVA or OVF template. Prod ESXi 01 dot this is the domain. Fine. Next, so, sorry, select the OVF file, go to downloads. And select the image which we have downloaded. Okay, next select SSD. Fine. <coughs> Accept the licenses. Okay, and I want to put this in Milan 30 and remove the check mark. Power on, no customization, just simply deploy. done see it's deployed now this is vm is deployed you can simply power on so what is the difference between uh, sorry first step and the second step second step is now successful yesterday we got the error right when we were when we were deploying the OVA template it is giving some storage error 
So that is due to the image what we have downloaded that might be corrupted or something. Now I have downloaded the new image from the same site what I have shown you yesterday. Which one? If you guys want to practice, go to this site. Nested virtualization 6.7. And you can download the appliance this one <clears throat> i just downloaded this one okay so ova template is imported and it's powered on let me open the console remote console because I have installed so let me go to settings apps you need to download and install VMware where it is remote console this one you need to install in your desktop or laptop if you want to open console remotely like this okay go to full screen you see system is up and running so what is the difference between first class and this second class in first session i've shown you how to create a vm how you can mount the iso how to install and configure the esxi on top of empty machine or bare metal machine in real time okay so now i have imported pre-configured image pre-configured image which you call it as OVF or OVA template so once you Im import the template and simply power on you'll see pre-installed machine is up and running so what what you need to do what you need to do now simply login and assign the IP address One sixty-eight thirty dot fifty-one and subnet, which I have mentioned over there, or what gateway is the gateway? Just escape. It will ask you have made changes to the host management network. Applying these changes may result in brief network outage. Disconnect the remote management software and affect the running virtual machines. In case IPv6 has been enabled or disabled, this will restart the host. Fine. I haven't changed the IPv6. I've changed the IPv4. Simply restart the network service. Okay. Now it's set. What else you need to do? I'm sorry. I still need to do some of the changes. Go back. And IPv6. Yes, you can disable it because we are not going to use it anymore. And then DNS configuration. If you have a DNS server, 192, 168, 30.55. 30.55. Is there any server with the DNS configured with this IP or name? Nothing. I'm going to build it in some time. So, what is the server name? What is the server name? Let me come out from the full screen. So, you'll see on top. This is the server name. That's it. Escape. Now it is asking you have changed something. You want to restart again? Yes. Now the host. host. Why it is not? One second. Something strange. If I disable IPv6, it should reboot the host. Also expected behavior. No, I haven't disabled it, man. That is the reason. Okay, disable, enter, escape. It will now restart. <coughs> My mistake. So, configuration part is done. So, what is the difference between the first step and second step? 
no 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 vm creation no installation only configuration in the second step so one vm is up and running i need two more such vms okay so if you want to simulate yourself into real time imagine you you got the environment with following setup you have a rack with three hp dl servers okay so esxi1 esxi2 esxi3 so each has the same configuration what we discussed in the second class imagine you have four cables on each two for production one for serial cable another one for management you connect via management and mount the cd install it done do the same on the second and third you need to build the three asx servers in your real time if you want to build a customer environment <clears throat> okay so let me do the second one the first server it is still oh it is up and running the first server is rebooted and it is up and running let's see how to access it 192 168 30 dot 51 same no difference root and the password no if you look at the things 6.7 and you have cpu assigned something and around 6 GB RAM, zero storage. This is the brand new ESX server which you built on top of base ESX. Okay, so this is done. The second one, let's do the second one. Go to ESX server, not this one, man, main one. Main ESX. Create one more VM. Deploy PR six zero two right the second server use the same image same SSD accept the user license put it on VLAN thirty finish okay I'll let it deploy meanwhile I'll try to bring one more it's deployed create I'll also deploy the third one directly same template next put it on vlan 30 finish okay go to virtual machines You'll see three VMs got deployed. One is up and running, which is taking around seven GB space. Another two are still not. Powered on. So let me select the second one. Power on and open the console. Is able to follow it or any difficulties? So, what I'm doing, I'm simply setting up the lab for my day to day purpose.
okay so it's again pre-installed just need to configure it done so go to to yeah understand so I'll assign the IP address. Thirty dot fifty two. Same subnet, and the gateway will remain same. Disable IPv six DNS. What is IP? One ninety two one sixty eight thirty dot fifty five, and we are ESXI02 dot sir host name that I'm trying to set yes it will restart done with this second one is also done go to third host power on do the following steps the third host as Okay, once, once the system is up, then we'll assign the IP address and the reboot the third one as well. Done. So go to ESXi inside I'll get, I'll share the password ninety two one sixty eight what is IP thirty dot fifty three the gateway same gateway thirty dot one DNS thirty dot fifty five and done. So let it restart. So all the three hosts now deployed. All the three hosts. On off deployed and up and running. Refresh. Second host is up and running. Once the third host is rebooted, it will see third host will also up and running with the host name. So click on any host, you will see host name is populated. But if you copy the host name and try it here, you will not be able to connect. I don't have any I don't have any DNS configured in my home setup that is the reason it is not working even if you try to ping it 192 168 30.51 it's pinging ping 
try so it is going to somewhere else amazon aws.com right so it is not going to resolve it in your local fine it's okay not an issue so go back so far what we did we have in, we have deployed three ova templates and in, configured three esx servers right three esx servers can we create a vms on top of a esx server hello hello So can we create VMs on top of any ESX server? Is it possible? Yes. Right? So now you can create VMs on top of any ESX server and you can manage it. You agree on this point? Yes. Okay. Now you're working for a customer name called Okay, imagine the customer name is this and you are, you are working for this customer. He has a DC in US and inside the data center, I said three servers I have shown, but you have similar kind of servers around 350 servers. Okay, so what is the IP for the first server? The IP is 51. The second server, 30 dot. 52 you can log in and manage it and and so on you have how many around 350 servers so in a day-to-day -day, consider your day-to-day -day activities in a day-to-day -day, are you going to log in and check each and every server in the morning and see if there are any errors, any issues, or any VMs are down, or maybe something crashed or something. Are you going to perform health checks on a daily basis in a manual way, saying, I need to log into all the 350 servers and check what is the error, or is there any warnings or something? Is it possible for you to log in into 350 servers and do the health check on a daily basis? No. Then what you will do? Then what you will maybe do? Another tool, uh, maybe another tool is uh, there for VMware. Okay. So the tool, what you said is correct, but technically what you call it as, there is a centralized management tool. You call it as vCenter. Okay. You need vCenter is a centralized management tool where it can manage all your host how many hosts in this picture three if you imagine your real time i said you have 350 so all the 350 servers are configured in one vcenter so that you can check at one location possible yes. okay so so far what we what we covered ESX installation configuration and how you will deploy multiple VMs using OVF and OVA template and how you can configure the ESX servers for your lab setup today what today that we covered and we'll discuss what is vCenter and why we need a vCenter and how to configure the vCenter. So these are the few things that we still need to discuss. Okay, let's go ahead and check something. VMware vCenter. So what it says? VMware vCenter server is a centralized management utility for VMware and is used to manage virtual machines, multiple ESXi hosts, and all dependent components from single centralized location. That is one single statement straight away 
what we are getting from Google. Apart from this, okay, fine. One single location, you can manage this. Apart from this, earlier before we start this session, I asked you one question. What was that? You have ES Access Server and you created four machines. Four servers up and running. I said you got a ticket saying host is down. When the host is down, obviously all the VMs will go down or not. Yes. Okay. So keep the VMware concept aside for a minute. Go back to the previous legacy business. You have one server and you install Windows and you are using it. And you have another server, install Linux and using it. One more, one more. So, Windows and Windows. So, you have four servers. You installed four servers with three Windows and one Linux server. Everything is working fine. But, we, we brought the VMware into picture saying, all these four hosts are not utilizing up to their benchmark or up to their highest potential. Let's say this Windows Server is of 32 GB RAM and we found that we are not even crossing 8 GB since last one year. Means the server you purchased three years back from last three years, you are not even using 25% of your capacity your system capacity so just to bring that up you brought vmware and part of the cost saving you removed all these three physical servers and you created four machines here so that all the four machines which are actually running on a physical servers individual physical servers has been consolidated to VMware and now running with one so that at least 50% cost saving I can say example these are all just imaginary examples only don't take as calculated benchmark values okay now your customer is happy because you saved 50% now all of a sudden the host is gone now all the four VMs are gone at a single point of time or at a time, I can say. Now, due to this, okay, you book the loss of around 120%. Where you are saving 50% cost saving, you in turn created more losses because if you are using four servers, if one server goes bad, it's fine. You still have three servers and your business will run. But you consolidate everything and now you bring everything down. Previously, at least one server is down, it's fine. I still have three. But you have only one host and all four machines are gone. And it impacted the business, what you thought earlier in a different way. So is there any way to overcome this? Yes. So, can we take, a, take this example and I have four VMs here and another two VMs here, another two VMs here, let's say for example. So, all the four VMs are connected, sorry, four, three hosts are connected to vCenter and everything is working fine, everything is functioning normal, all of a sudden this host goes down okay so you cannot do anything all the four vms are gone but what if after five minutes or within five minutes if this and this will come to here and start working automatically and this and this will come to here and start working within five minutes customer happy or not Okay, just to achieve this, you need a vCenter. 
technically we call this as a technically you might have seen in the google youtube somewhere and a lot of readings high availability you technically you call this as a high availability if you want to achieve this you need vcenter and couple of other features are there let me list it down vSphere distributed switch okay ha drs ft templates v apps and vsan replication all this stuff comes under vcenter so if you want to avail all these features along with virtualization what we discussed so far you need to have a vcenter understand why you need a vcenter okay in in previous versions till 6.5 or 6.0 you'll say let's say 6.5 you have an option called you can install vcenter on one windows virtual machine one windows virtual machine or there is a pre-configured vcenter image called as appliance two things you can download the vcenter software from vmware site and you can install it on your windows server is one way another way is you can download the vcenter software appliance and you can deploy it on your any esx server as a vm what it will do it will spin up on linux machine and on top of linux machine the vcenter appliance will start functioning automatically so there are two ways to bring the vcenter up and running any questions up to this Hello. Okay. Fine. So now we are discussing about 6.7, not 6.5 or 6.0. So 6.7, let me go back to the VMware and see VMware 6.7. We center down. can go to any of these links okay and download vcenter 6.7 let me check if i have downloaded it already go to softwares vmware six point seven and 6.7 you still have a windows as well okay vmware vim install manager 6.7 around 2 gb this is this is iso image where you can deploy it on your windows machine and vcsa vmware 6.7 vcenter server appliance vcenter server appliance 6.7 which is of around 4 GB is also I have also downloaded the same. So <clears throat> what we will do is we'll install or we'll deploy the vCenter appliance to bring your vCenter service up and running to manage your customer environment. As I said, you have 350 servers because every day you cannot log into the, all the 350 servers and manage it, or you check the health uh, perform the health checks or you check the errors and stuff. It is not feasible. So you need vCenter. Fine. So what we will do is I have the images ready. Okay. I need to do some of the pre-work. One pre-work is I need one Active Directory server and Active Directory along with DNS. I need one Windows server for that. What is IP for that? What is IP we planned? it what is ip for
192, 168.30.55. I have mentioned this everywhere in ESXi. So I need to build one server, one Windows server that acts as a DC as well as DNS for entire lab. So what is the next step? Let me recap quickly what we covered so far. Introduction, install, configure, ESXi, third one, stand, OVA and OVF and VMware, sorry, VM, I'll say virtual machine files we covered yesterday and deploy OVA and OVF templates to set up VMware lab and I'll not say overview, I'll say basic basic understanding of why you need a vCenter. So, so far we covered these topics. Tomorrow, tomorrow what we will do, we'll install and configure Windows 2019 or 2016, whichever Active Directory and DNS. Also, if time permits, we'll deploy appliance. This is the next two days. Maybe if time permits tomorrow, both the steps are tomorrow this and after tomorrow this, these two steps. Okay, so go through these, go through the sessions what we covered so far and then do some R&D on these three headings. I'll just say headings, you, you just Google it and try to understand what it is and then we'll discuss more in tomorrow's session. Clear? Any questions? Everyone? No. Vivek? Yeah, sure, I'll, that, that I'll do. Okay, so any technical questions I'm saying? All right, yeah, no problem. We can discuss more tomorrow. So I'll stop here. So let's catch up tomorrow and discuss further. Thank you.